Now, uh, in the introduction, Stephen said that this is uh, uh, a very uh, distinguished uh, public servant, first woman of color to be elected uh, uh, um, citywide in New York City. Uh, but I know that a lot of our students come from the wonderful borough of Brooklyn, from Kings County. So can I, can, can I see the Kings County fans in the house? Yay! So even though she Five. represents the entire city, <laughs> this is first and foremost uh, uh, a loyal sister of that magnificent borough. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> and I should also say that uh, she's not a stranger. Uh, to Metropolitan College of New York because she's been here before. Yes. So we thank you so much for your support of this thank college. You. I appreciate that. So uh, th this is a gathering of our graduate, potential graduate students. Um, and so tonight they're here to, to learn more about our very uh, various programs. So I was wondering if you could share with them from your perspective uh, the importance of education and why is it necessary that they should pursue graduate study. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Hello. So good evening. Um, you know, I, I'm, this month is Black History Month, and um, I don't celebrate black history just in the month of February. I celebrate black oh, history yeah. every day, 365 days of the year, because it's American history. But as I've been preparing my remarks for all of these events to the city of New York, and, and, and as I've been reviewing data and metrics, about the state of black America, it's been very disheartening. Because as the black middle class has tripled, the reality is that black children are still in poverty at the same rate as they were in the late 1960s. And I say all of that to say uh, that the advancement of people of color and women in particular has all been inextricably tied to education, to the labor movement, to the full th thrust and force of government, um, and to an economy um, that really has uh, focused on the needs of Americans and New Yorkers as a whole. So for me, uh, I recognize that education really is the key to prosperity. Education is the key to independence. If you look at the feminization of poverty in this country, more and more women are not getting married, more and more single women are having children, more and more women are becoming independent, but women are paid less than men. Women, unfortunately, there's a wage gap more women have less retirement security. And the way to overcome all of these obstacles and all of these inequalities is education. Now, that's not a panacea, because we still have a problem with sexism and racism. But one way to overcome and to address that gap is clearly to have that degree under your belt. And so I believe in the power of education. I believe that education can transform lives. And again, as a student of history who understands that you know, so many have made sacrifices for us to be in this position, you cannot take education lightly. And that's why you know, I know you, all of you are adults. Um, and you're, you're getting your, you're coming back to school and a lot of you are working and, and a lot of you have, are, are, um, have full-time jobs and you've got families. I think um, education really is the key and it will open up all doors. It did for me and if it can, and if, and if uh, I stand before you as someone whose mom was once on public assistance, one of eight, and if education can do miracles for me, I know we can do it for you. Thank you so much. So in that vein, could you now speak to, in as much as you're the second most influential uh, public servant in the city of New York, the importance of public service? So, you know, we've still got struggles. We've got a lot of struggles in this city. I just mentioned in income inequality. We all know about the housing crisis. Tonight in this city, 60,000. 
100,000 New Yorkers will go to sleep in our shelters homeless. And some even say it's, it's higher than that. And a third of the homeless in this city are children, children who are black and brown. And part of it is because of housing, because of the crisis in housing, because of the need for affordable housing, because of market um, factors. And because under the last administration, it was a gilded age where it was primarily um, focused on uh, opening up the market forces uh, to the real estate lobby in this city. And also because of the power of money and the influence of money in politics. And so there are so many challenges in our society, so many challenges from the crisis in affordable housing to an educational system which has failed our children, to an educational system which dis over disciplines our children, to the mass incarceration of black and Latino men, to the wage gap, uh, to the feminization of poverty, to the growing disparities between the haves and the have nots. to the fact that we've got health challenges. In communities of color, people are dying from diseases that are preventable. Diabetes, obesity, HIV and AIDS. We've got individuals who are, um, getting, are dying from heart disease. Men are dying at a faster rate than obviously their female counterparts. Men who just don't go to the doctor. Men who are afraid of uh, seeing a doctor. We've got asthma in parts of Brooklyn and parts of the Bronx, which rival that of third world countries. We've got children who are dying each and every day. We've got domestic violence, which is ravishing some communities. You've got public housing, which has for a very long time been ignored and neglected. And you've got a Congress which basically has disrespected the president and reduced him to the sidelines. And unfortunately, a Congress which has turned its back on urban centers. You've got high rates of unemployment in New York City and all across this nation. You've got trade deals where individuals where you, we, once had, we once had very successful manufacturing districts which are now barren. And individuals who used to, were once in a position to maintain a family with a high school diploma, no longer is that possible today, given our economy and given the fact that industry manufacturing have left, basically has left us, left this country and gone south. We're dealing with countries uh, who are paying their, who are, who are basically rivaling our local economy. And so you've got mass unemployment and you've got individuals, particularly, again, young people who just don't value and recognize the importance of education and the fact that people died for our right to go to school. And yet, it's, what's cool is being dumb. And then you've got a presidential candidate who's running for office who applauds that, who says he loves individuals who are uneducated. It's the dumbing down of America. And all of us should be challenged by that because it threatens us as a country and as a society. And particularly in communities of color where it's cool to be stupid. And this notion of being smart is somehow associated with being white. Well, education and knowledge knows no color, knows no race. And that's why all of you have a duty and a responsibility to be leaders in this society and to be individuals who carry on the cause of social justice, who, carry, who care about the least of God's children, and who recognize that you've got a duty and a responsibility to carry the, to carry the mantle of social justice and to talk about issues that affect the quality of lives from the Bronx to Brooklyn from South Jamaica to the Rockaways, because people are struggling in this society. And we've got to stand together because they're demonizing our city and they're demonizing our community. They're demonizing the LGBT community. They're demonizing immigrants. We've got to stand together.
people who understand the power and the, the power of education and who recognize that we are all together, that we are inextricably tied together, that I as a black woman am, am tied to my white sister, that the immigrant next door to me is tied to my LGBT neighbor. We are all tied together as one family and we will not be divided by individuals who preach hate and who wanna divide us. And the best way to deal with that is to deal with it through education, through facts, and being disciplined in our response. That's what we need to do. Thank you. So, so I, I imagine, uh, Madam Public Advocate, that, that when you were contemplating running for citywide office, that there were lots of naysayers <laughs> yeah. who said, nah, you'll never make it. Yeah but you defied them nonetheless. Yeah. And here you stand today with a very powerful voice in the city of New York. I imagine in the same vein that there are naysayers out there who would tell prospective graduate students, nah, I don't think you can make it. What words do you want to offer to a this A lot of them are in your family, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of them are people in your family. A lot of them are people who you may sleep with. Hello? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry if I got too close. <laughs> right? A lot of them are people who claim they love you. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are people who really are, are, are concerned about your, or nervous about you becoming successful, about you becoming independent, about you not needing them. A lot of them are concerned that you're going to be so knowledgeable of the facts that uh, you can basically argue your points and dismiss their, their rejection of your success. But I say to you, you've got to listen to that little voice in your head that says that you can do it and that the power lies in your hands and that all you have to do is realize the power that's in your hands and take advantage of the power that's in your hands and rise up to the occasion. And do what is in your best interest, not in anybody else's best interest. We oftentimes think about others. Oh, no. It's time to be selfish and think about yourself because when you get your degree, when you get that piece of paper, nobody will be able to take it away from you. Nobody. And this will open up all doors. And this will overcome all isms, racism, sexism, ageism, isms. And this will be the key to that independence. And so yes, people were, oh no, not Tish, no, mm -mm. she's not running citywide, no, 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 no way. Every major newspaper in the city said, wrote terrible editorials in opposition to Letitia James running for public advocate. City Council, yes, one little neighbor, you know, a couple of neighborhoods in Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, Prospect Heights, Crown Out, shout out, a little bit of Bedford Stuyvesant. She could stay there, that's good. But not citywide. She cannot be a voice citywide. And part of the reason is because I talk about empowerment. And part of the reason is because I recognize that if I got all of you and all of your friends to come out and vote, we could transform the body politic in the city. Part of it is if I awaken a sleeping lion, a sleeping dragon, if all of you came out just like we did after President Barack Obama, if we could just somehow harness that power, somehow that power went away because, you know, unfortunately all of that enthusiasm has died down. Where is it? I want to tap into that and get it back. And I want all of you to vote. And despite the fact that I know all across this nation they are trying to challenge and trying to remove and you know, challenge the right to vote. Do you know that after President Obama was elected to office, states all across this nation are challenging the right to vote. It reminds us of Jim Crow. It's similar to the literacy tests and the poll tax. And it's partly because they're afraid of young people, young people. And it's young people, if you look through, if you uh, are a student of history, it's the young people who have been in the forefront of every struggle in this nation. Young people who stood in the way of the tanks in Tiananmen Square in China. Young people who were involved in the civil rights movement. 
young people who were involved in the right of women to vote, young people who organized the conventions, young people who elected Barack Obama, young people who are responsible for so much. And yes, young people who are feeling the burn, even though I'm with Hillary, but they're feeling the burn. And all I say to you is they were afraid, I guess, of my voice, of my passion, because there's nothing more dangerous, women, than a woman with a made up mind. And all of you in here, and the men in here, if all of you have a mind that is made up to becoming a success, then you are a threat to those forces that would keep you down and oppress you. And I say to all of you, rise up, get that piece of paper, and come back and make a hell of a difference and shake shit up in the city. Excuse me, I curse, I apologize. That's all right. They all shake adults it up. here. Just shake it up. Shake it up. Oftentimes I come to hearings and I go to meetings and they're like, oh, what is she gonna do now? She, she came into a meeting, oh my God, what are we, how are we gonna respond? Because when I come into a meeting and when I come into a hearing, people know that I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna ask hard questions. And I'm gonna speak truth to power. And you know, there's nothing more uplifting and satisfying than that when you know people not only respect you, but they fear you. And well, that's, I, that's an awesome power. Yes, it is. Well, I think we could go on for another 30 minutes, but I know that some of you want to get to the, <laughs> to the details of uh, how do I sign up so that I can live out the powerful words and messages that uh, the Honorable uh, Tish has given us tonight. But part in words, if you could see these students on their way out a year from now with masters in business administration, masters in public administration, What's the part and word that you want to offer for them? So let me just say this. We've got term limits coming up in the city council. We're losing seven women, seven elected officials who happen to be women who serve in the city council. We need more women in politics. We need more individuals in the criminal justice system to reform the criminal justice system. We need more individuals, obviously, uh, to reform Rikers Island. We need more individuals who, who work on Wall Street to reform Wall Street and make that more transparency. We need more women to serve on boards. We need more women to be head of not-for-profits to serve the homeless and the hungry. We need more individuals to build affordable housing for individuals like the LGBT community that are sleeping on subway, subway grates uh, not too far from here. We need all of you in leadership positions, and the only way that you can be there is when you get your degree in your hands. I don't know about you, but I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. Well, uh, so uh, just, I, I need you to come back and join me in the struggle for freedom and for social justice in the city. Well, I, I know they want me to, to, to stop right to there, wrap up. Um, Tish, but uh, uh, on, <laughs> on, on these final words, yeah. I just want to echo this, that uh, I know that you, you'll, be, you'll be around because some of us have expectations that the oh, next step boy. up will become the very distinguished mayor of the city of New York. I don't know about could I, that. Could you I put know your that hands together on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Would you again give a nice round warm uh, applause for the, the distinguished advocate of the city of New York? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. That's better. I don't know about you, but Friday is my favorite day of the week. Yeah, same thing for me. The best thing about Friday is Saturday. Right? And Sunday. Right? Come on now, you know and, it's true. All right, and the, next, true. the next Saturday too, after that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I want to start off a little different. Let's start off with a little fun. Um, so before we get into your career, when you have uh, obviously a, a great day at the office and you want to come home and relax and you're in TV, you know, what, what is a couple of, of... Keep talking. Fun? Okay, what are a couple of TV programs that you actually are checking into now? Okay. So in about two and a half hours, I'll be watching Scandal. All right. Okay. Um, in about Gladiators. About another week and a half, I'll be watching Empire. Okay. Um, right. I'm moving into a new demographic, so I watch CBS Sunday morning. Ooh. Okay. Um, you know, I watch TV when I can, okay. but I also have a television in my office, so love it. I'm, love it. I'm still a General Hospital fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, we've read, I've read your bio, it's, it's super impressive. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do as the VP of Community Affairs at ABC? 
So basically my job is, as it says in my bio, is to really be the connection between the community and the television station. So on one hand, I'm the voice of the community. On the other hand, I'm the voice of the television station. And it's in the sense that I open the doors to the community to promote the work that's being done, to share with other viewers some of the things that are being done in our community. And when I say community, I mean the tri-state. So I work with organizations in New Jersey, Long Island, the five boroughs, Westchester, Rockland County. We're in 29 counties. So my thing is to really bridge the gap and to provide opportunities along the lines of coverage. I promote, I promote um, our shows. I work on our community calendar. I do a lot of tours. I had a tour group of students, special needs kids at the television station today. I gave them a behind the scenes look at the television station. Awesome. So anything that really provides opportunity for the community to come in, but the same token as I, is in my, it says in my bio, we have town hall meetings. We're gonna have one up in Westchester at the end of the month, at the end of March. So it's really to provide coverage also of good things that are happening to the community yes. and to share that information with my newsroom as well as our public affairs programs so that we can get the good word out to the community. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's, and it's different every day. Wow, so I mean, you just deal with a lot of activities, uh, a lot of responsibilities. Can you tell me a little bit about how education has kind of helped prepare you for um, having multiple roles and responsibilities in your career? Well, I mean, when you're in school, generally, depending upon when you're in college, you are probably doing a multitude of things and having to interact with all different kinds of people. If you're, if you're a parent, you've got to deal with your children. If you're partnered, you have to deal with your partner. If you're um, living with your parents, you got to deal with your parents. <laughs> and, then, and, then you, and then you go to school and you've got professors. So, and you, you know, the job I do is really about dealing with people. Yeah. And I think that my education helped me in the sense that when I went to graduate school in particular, I was working full time. So I went to school at night. So I had a full time job during the day and I went to school at night and I graduated and it took me three years. Okay. But so I was juggling, you know, two different, two different things at the same time. So I think that, that has certainly helped me. And getting the education in itself, uh, part of the whole thing is working with people on a daily basis. Yeah. And that's what, that's what the work world is about. You know, my daughter, who's now a freshman in college, was complaining to me when she was a freshman in high school about her teachers. Yeah. She said, I don't like this teacher. I said, it doesn't matter if you like this teacher. <laughs> because it's not about liking the teacher. Because you're going to, have teachers you don't like, mm -hmm. you're gonna have classes you don't like, then you're gonna to go to college and you're gonna have courses, most likely that you're gonna like because you have more of a choice, yeah. and you're gonna have professors who you don't care for. And then you're gonna to go to work and you're gonna work with people you don't like. So let's get the like out of it mm -hmm. and let's focus on the point. The point is that you need to figure out a way to get an education so that you can learn to live without me. <laughs> Well, will you it's laugh, true. but that's what it's about. It's true. The name of the game is how to live without your parents, Absolutely. how to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And most people don't realize that's what the name of the game is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so you speak about education and, and that helping, and, and pretty much that's training you to be out here in the real world. Um, but you, you, you had a college degree, and you went and got your graduate degree. What kind of influenced that decision to take the extra step in going and get your master's? Honestly, for me, it was a personal goal of mine while I was in college to get my master's degree. Okay. And when I was about to graduate from college, one thing I knew for sure was that I did not want to go back home. <laughs> and I'm not from New York originally, so that was a part of the influence, but I was ready to go out into the world. Mm -hmm. But I also highly value education. And so, you know, I had a mother who graduated from college the same year I graduated from elementary school, okay? So she, she left college. Wasn't my fault entirely, but part of it was. Right. Um, but so, so in my family, it's highly valued, getting an education. But I also wanted to learn more. I also wanted to learn more. But what really pushed me was the fact that I knew if I didn't go, I went immediately after undergraduate school, yeah. I might not go. Because what happens is people want to make money. Yeah. And you know, I always joke with young people and say, you can't wait to get out of school so you can make money, but do you realize being in school is a short period of time. Working is a lifetime. Working is a lifetime. 
Working is a lifetime. Yep. Okay. Y'all hear it's that, right? 40, <laughs> 50, and the older, the longer we live, the longer we're working. So I felt it was really important for me to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated from college and I didn't want to go home, my option was if I didn't get a job, I was going to try to figure out to, a way to go to graduate school. Um, but I was fortunate, I got a job, yeah. and part of that job opportunity presented me with, with also being able to go to school part time. And that's, that's a blessing, especially, you know, when you look at the job market now, sometimes it's hard to be able to come right out of school and, and get a job and start your career. Um, so in line with that, what would you say to someone who is going back to school? Maybe they, you know, graduated from high school and took some time off and is coming back a little later. Um, what kind of motivation or some tips you could give them to coming back into the fold and getting that goal? You know, I, I, I think that it's really important to think about why you're going to school. Yeah. And as I said before, for me, it was a personal a goal of mine, um, but I think it's important to think about why you want to go to school to begin with because, quite frankly, not everybody's college material. But I do believe that higher education provides you with more opportunity. That is just a fact. Yeah. And some people say, well, if I go to school now, I'm going to be 40 when I graduate. If I go to school now, I'm going to be 30. You're going to be 40 anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, really, that cannot be the benchmark. So, more education is more opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, part of the challenge is figuring out who you are yeah. and who you want to be. And once you lay that out, and if education, I think, you know, Tish James nailed it in terms of the people that will hold you back yeah. from your goal. And when I speak to people who happen to be maybe younger than some of the folks here, I talk about, look, the way I look at all of this is I'm the star of this movie. This is a Sandra Thomas movie. I'm the star. And in my movie, I do this. Yeah. And you're going to have background players who sometimes try to throw you off your being the star. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think Tish nailed it when she said that because it's true. So you have to decide who you want to be. And if you want to be a person who's going to do X, Y, and Z in the world, and if education most likely will take you there, then you have to go get your education. And you figure out a way. Because people find a way to do the things they want to do, right? Yes. People run around saying, I don't have no money. But then they have money for certain things. Mm -hmm. Because people find a way to do the things they want to do. Yep. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, in dealing with challenges, let's say there was like a time machine. You can go back and talk to your 17-year-old self. Um, and you only could give one tip, one, one tip of advice, career, career advice you can give them from your experience. What would you tell yourself at 17 years old? Find a mentor. That's the one thing I would do. Because quite frankly, I've done pretty much everything I've set up to do. I'm very goal-oriented. But the one thing I did not do, and I'm a big believer in mentoring, is to find a mentor. Find someone in your life whose, whose agenda is not like your parents, and if you get back to your parents, where, where, however old you are, yeah. your parents' agenda, if you're an, a high school student, is for you to leave their house. They want you to leave one day. So they will tell you things to help you to do that, and they will encourage you to do things that you don't necessarily want to do. But I think that a mentor is a person who generally is for you, and, and I think that can be the key to opportunity, to have somebody who's just there to listen to you. So that's what I would tell myself. And I did not do that. Right. That's awesome, awesome advice. Um, so on the topic of well, city council, you ran for a city council previously. Um, I guess what influenced that decision, and um, what are some things now that you're still trying to get accomplished and fight for? A moment of insanity is what influenced that decision. Um, I ran for city council because, look, I have a great job, and one of the things that, that happens in my job is I get to do a lot in the community. I get to support a lot that's happening out here. I get to, one of the things I do is we have a little budget. I support a lot of nonprofits by giving money to nonprofits. Um, but there's things that I can't do because I work for a television station. And the thing that's, that, that's most concerning to me is this pipeline crisis. And I wanted to do more. And so I have the fortune of working for a company that supports me and what I do. And so I asked for a leave of absence. 
so that I could run for city council, so that my voice um, maybe would make a difference in our city on a bigger level. Right. And that's why I ran. So I came in second in a field of four. I didn't lose, I just came in second. Right, okay. <laughs> I just wanna get that clear. But what's happened since then is I have found the opportunities to do some of the things behind the scenes that uh, I wanted to do without some of the other stuff, let's just say, that comes with working in okay. the public. All right, all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know exactly what you, well, kind of, I don't know. Two chances <laughs> is probably going to about five other events tonight. Right, I'm going home to watch Scandal. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gladiators out there. Okay. Like, we yeah. got DVR yeah. set, DVR That's set. Awesome. All right, so I guess one last question to wrap up. Um, there's, and, and you working in entertainment and dealing with community affairs, so I definitely want to get your, your take on this. Um, there's, been, there's been talk about the Oscars and you know minorities not being fully represented on the mainstream level and scale. Um, and as you being a professional and executive in entertainment at a TV station, do you feel that we have enough representation of minorities um, on TV, especially with um, black women? Well, on television, actually, there is a great representation. Okay. Okay, television has come a long way. But the only way it will change in terms of what we see is if the people behind the scenes also reflect the people we want to see on television. Okay, the power is in the hands of the people who produce, who write, who make the money, right? So some good news, if I can just share about ABC, since that's those are the people that you know help me get these boots I have on. Hello. Okay. Um, <laughs> the head of ABC Entertainment uh, just resigned, we'll say, and the woman who was hired is a black woman, who's going to be the head of ABC Entertainment. The other thing is the. VIEW, which is about to celebrate its 20th anniversary next year, the new executive producer is also a black woman. So that's where the power is yeah. in the decision making. And that will hopefully, doesn't ever guarantee, but hopefully change who and what we see on television. And that's where the power lies in the decision making. The decision making. You know, so that's my spiel on that. Amazing, amazing. All right, so, you know, she's given us a lot of great information. We got to soak in this up, all this good stuff. Um, so any, any, right, so, <laughs> so any last words you want to just give or, or just leave with us? Last words. You know, I know you all are in different places in terms of your college or graduate experience. I don't believe there is anything to lose by getting a degree of any kind. One of my personal goals is to get my doctorate. It's just on my list because you know what? Every day, I personally, and not to sound too lofty, but if you think about it, it's, it's as true as saying tomorrow's Friday and the best thing about Friday is saying that. <laughs> this is it. It's one shot. It's one shot. So I have a list and I want to punch through that list of things that I personally want to accomplish. And I feel that if you want to go to college, you should go to college. I feel if you want to go to graduate, you should go to graduate. There's, it's always going to be hard. You know, I had young people say, oh, it's too hard. Everything's hard. Yep. Everything's hard. Mm -hmm. So start with it's hard, and then just do it. And get that out of the way. But I think that there's nothing to lose by having an education. And, and what Tish said is something that I've been taught from day one by my parents. Is no, it is something no one can take away from you. The knowledge, the information that you get from professors, from your, from your peers. Yeah. So just do it. Just do it. That is the way that you will find success. Because once you get that piece of paper, and you know when you look back, and those of you who are parents know this, and you look back if you have like an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old like I do, and I look, and I think about all the things I've done in 18 years, and raise a human being. It's a great feeling. Yeah. So just 
go for it, you can find the money, you can find the, the support, you can find the mentor, all of that. And don't let anybody talk you out of it because you are the star of your movie. That's all I have to say. All right, thank you for about our applause.